Right then, Tobes. Trouble free motoring. We're not even at Bristol yet. We've got engine system fault. It's now saying HTC fault and suspension lowered, and we seem to be coming to a stop, which is not great. Oh, God. We've got all sorts of lights and everything now. Oh, yeah, we have two. Oh, my God. I wonder if, like, some belt or something has just gone. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well. Today, you join us down the farm as Toby and I are about to embark on a little bit of an adventure. We've got our Mercedes SL500, the five litre V8 thing that we previously had on a raffle site, but they took the cash prize, I think. It's sat here for quite a while because the roof has decided to stop working. We did try and sell it as is, but people weren't interested, fair enough. And we've now spoken to the guys at Transformotion who are going to try and put this back to standard for us because it's got an aftermarket exhaust, it's got aftermarket wheels, it's got tinted windows. It's a bit of, you know, a bit of a drug dealer spec. We're gonna try and put it back to stand and see if that helps and see if they can get the roof working and an MOT back on it for us. But that's a four hour drive and our transport options are limited because Macaulay is doing other things. Uh, we've got the Navara, but that has sprung a power steering leak, so we can't drive that. Uh, our green truck has gone to auction which leaves just the black truck, which Macaulay's using. So we need to tow it up there with something. And our only option really is my dad's abandoned L322 Range Rover Vogue. This is my dad's old Land Rover that he had before we got him the new Range Rover Sport that you may have seen in the previous video. And it's just sat out here and just being abandoned really to say, oh, you can use it whenever you want, but we haven't for a good couple of months. And I thought, you know what? That'll probably do the job. It's a 3.6 TDV8, so it's really juicy. It will kill me in the fuel bill, but it will tow no problem whatsoever. It's comfortable, it's luxurious, all that sort of stuff. It should, you know, be the perfect towing vehicle, but there are a few quirks. A, the central locking doesn't work. B, the fuel gauge doesn't always work. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes it goes into like a limp mode, but should be able to reset it by cycling the ignition. It's not an ideal situation. It's a bit sketchy. I'm a little bit nervous, I'll be honest. But can the L322 do itself proud and get us all the way to Liverpool, across to Chesterfield, up to Leeds, and then back home again as we go on a round robin trip doing loads of different things? Time will tell, but first off, we're gonna get it started. And I tried yesterday, I know it's flat. So we've got to grab our trusty top don and see if that will get it going. You can see I was out here yesterday trying to get it going with some jump leads because I didn't have my top don. Um, but I think I need to get some new jump leads for a start. But let's put the key in and I'll show you just how dead it is at the moment. I don't think the battery is bad because it had some life. It just wasn't enough to get going. But the good news about having something small like the JS 1500 is you can carry it with you. So we can charge this in the hotel or from the car as we drive along. Should be worried it's not going to start again in the morning, which, you know, you never know. So. That's what we've got so far. Will our tiny little box get it going? Not forgetting it's a big 3.6 V8 diesel engine. Right, so. Press and hold the boost button. Well, it's going. It sounded a bit lumpy, but it's settled down now. Right, we'll leave that run on a minute, I think. We have got an engine management light on. That's not probably that surprising because we've just been jumping it. So I'll plug in a diagnostic and see what it's saying. Right, so I'm going to use my top down Archie Link 500B, which is really handy. I keep this down the farm because it's like a double whammy. You've got your battery connectors on there, so you can connect on, do a test of the battery, see whether it needs replacing or not, as well as swap your leads over, and you've got OBD diagnostics as well. So I think I'll keep this in the car as well for our trip. Cleared our codes. It's fired back up. That's good news. We'll let engine management light go off. Right, there we go. 
it was saying EGR circuit A low. So I'm assuming that was something to do with the battery related stuff. Toby, could you go around and shut my other door? Then we can level up the air suspension and then we can get this connected up. Top tip for you if you're ever trailering, they teach you this in your test when you have to do your test, which I've done. You don't have to do it now, do you? But once you're connected on, if you're not 100% sure whether you're on that ball and it's going to come off or not, wind your jockey wheel back up and see if it's lifting the car like this. And then you know for sure that you are definitely connected right and your trailer and car is not going to overtake you as you go down the motorway. Right then, Tobes. Trouble-free motoring. Right, first stop then is Skelmersdale, near Liverpool. If it would load, I'd tell you how, well, it said it was 168 miles. How many hours that is? Four at least, I'm sure. The fuel gauge is currently working and it's telling us we've got three quarters of a tank. Now, oh, do we trust that? Didn't take long, we're not even at Bristol yet, and we've got engine system fault. But I'm done with this. My dad said when I was talking about borrowing this, he said, Oh, yeah, it, it brings up a fault, but it doesn't go into limp mode. And I'm thinking to myself, I know I've towed with it before, and it doesn't like like long hills like this where you're under load, especially if you're on cruise control, because cruise control's got a habit of like thumping the power on quite hard. But he said it doesn't go into limp mode, but. It most definitely has. So we will need to stop and turn it off. Hopefully that isn't a theme for this whole trip because we've done uh, 36 miles. Not really even like 5% of the trip. We're not going to be doing this all the way. Maybe it'll warm up though. You know, it'll be better. It might be worse. The last thing I want for this is to happen big problems north of the country but we'll see I guess this is probably just a standard L322 quirk luckily the speeds come right down to 50 miles an hour now anyway and we're in heavy traffic so it's not really affecting us this is the face of stress Right, we are currently between Birmingham and Walsall. We have an hour and 44 to go. We've done 118 miles so far. My back's already killing me. We've got another 500 to go over the next two days. Uh, so we should be getting there around about three o'clock, but we are stuck in 22 minutes of traffic. Currently, it does look like that's about the worst of it so we will see but the old the old vogue's doing us proud to be honest i figured out that well i haven't figured out i already knew that if you're going uphill under load of a trailer on and you leave this in cruise control you tend to get the engine management we managed to uh, turn it off and on and it's cleared it again we haven't had it come on again since because every time we get to a hill i'm going to turn the cruise control off and just nurse it along just be kind to it she is old 20 years old, I think it's a fifth, is it a four? No, it's no seven, isn't it? Um, so, 17 years old. But, 17 years old, 142,000 miles. It's quite a, quite a comfy, decent drive. Very easy to tow with. So far, so good. So 
now saying HDC fault with suspension lowered and we seem to be coming to a stop which is not very good. Uh, let's put hazards on. Oh god, we've got all sorts of lights and everything now. Oh shit. So we need to neutral. Doesn't seem to want to start again, we got to. <laughs> we were nearly there as well. We were so nearly there. We we're literally nine minutes away. Oh my god. I wonder if like some belt or something has just gone. Because it's like there's no like no compression. Mm. Shizzle. That's put a kibosh on our plan, isn't it? Oh no, Ooh. it's fired up. But it's died off again. I wonder if we run out of fuel, because I wonder if the fuel gauge is lying to us. It's turning them really quickly though. How you doing? Hey mate, good thanks, how are you? Well, we've, we're nine minutes away and we've just broken down. Yeah. I don't know if we've run out of diesel because our fuel gauge, I don't think this can be trusted. Or if oh, the end. Do you know if you're on the M6, the average speeding? Uh, uh, yes, we are. Yeah, so I had to pull it in between the cones. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, well, we're going to. We'll come get you. So it's potentially maybe run out of diesel, best case. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've got a jerry can, just try it as an easy solution. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's easier driving it off the tunnel. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, the problem is we've got the trailer with the car on, which I don't mind driving with no MOT or whatever, but uh, yeah, then we've got the trailer that's left somewhere. Huh? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that now. No, no, I'm sorry. Sorry to make you have to come out and rescue me. You, you guys are used to it, I suppose. It's all good. All right, I'll yeah. see you in a bit. Okay, cool. I'll send you a location now. Do you know what? I, I, it's we're nine minutes away. So this is so much better than it could have been if we were further away. And at least we got a car there. We can drive. Yes, it's a smart car, <laughs> but you know it's got MOT. We've got tray plates, so oh, we can't get the trailer back though, can we? We might have to come back. Oh, God, we have to come back across with the Ranger if that passes as MOT. Hopefully, it's just fuel. Pray it's just fuel. Because you know what I thought was weird is it said we had three quarters of a tank, and my dad said it does 400 miles to a tank when it already had 300 miles on the clock. And he said he resets it when he fills it up. So I thought someone else must have used it. It's now saying just under half a tank of fuel, but uh, we've done 200 miles. So I reckon the time belt's got me now because it's spinning over so quickly. I wouldn't have a clue what I'm looking for, but let's just pray it's just diesel. That would be by far the best outcome. Uh, this has got some nice flowers and stuff, doesn't it? Nice views for up here, up north.
it was all going too well. I thought this trip was going to be really stressful, and I was like, that's going really nice. Actually, nice weather, nice little cruise up here. Just in the truck, the uh, chap's going to rescue us, so he's going to take us to Junction 26. I don't know whereabouts there, but okay, cool. So you left onto the M58 and drop us there. Would that sound all right? All right, no worries. Yes, and as you come off Junction 26, yeah. head towards the M58, so I think there's a lay-by on that or a hard shoulder or something on the left hand side. I think so, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. yeah. cool. Yeah, that's where he's thinking anyway, so cool, we should see you in a second. Nice one. Cheers, Jono. Cheers, Bobby. Three times. Every time it's been a Land Rover. Yeah. <laughs> OBD 11 never give us a another place around. I'll be having words. So we're thinking we get that in there first, figure out so we can try to get Joe home. And then well, if it's not, if that doesn't run, I'll have to leave it here for you guys to. If it's dead, get you guys to scrap it or whatever. I speak to my old man, find out what yeah. we want to do. Really? We'll have to take the smart oh, car. <laughs> yeah, well, you guys can fix it if you want a project. Um, we have to take the smart car off to where we're going tonight. Yeah, and then maybe come back. Hopefully, we'll arrange a yeah. trailer. It's fine. Well, what's your plan? Are you not going straight home then? Today. No, we're going across to Chesterfield next, so it's a couple of hours yet. And then. Are you looking at another car? Or literally uh, we've seconds got on. a Ranger, like a Seeker custom Ranger thing, at G3 in Leeds, but we're going to go and see my mate in Chesterfield first. Hmm. A long day, haven't we? Yeah. Well, it's yeah. all going to be the day. We've got to stay over tonight at Chesterfield, right. oh. then get up in the morning and do all that. But we didn't, uh, didn't budget in for having a dead Ranger over Yeah, I'll have to, don't I? Hopefully, we put this in, it cracks up, and you can just go to the juice station and place your bets now. That'll be an embarrassing breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> what? What do you say? It's telling you that it's got juice, but. Do you know, I did bring a toolkit with me, <laughs> yeah. so which was really optimistic. Because I thought, what am I going to do with that? I feel better bringing it though, but. Yeah. The one stops when you've got tools, so they can use them. Partly so when like Sam, the recovery driver, turns up, you don't look quite so much of a prick as he's like, have you got a screwdriver? Like, no, I didn't bring anything. I'd <laughs> run out of fuel and I haven't got any tools. And... Yeah, just give it a few ignition on laps. Just turn on fast, but there's no way it's going to start again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do you know what, now I think about it, I do think it does turn over like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's just that little bit too much. Yeah, it's like, you know, the battery should go in. Yeah. 
Hey! 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't give it half a tank, so that'll yeah. just prove that it does say. It's legitimate. It's got, yeah, it's got half a tank. You would have seen it. We got some footage of it with like three quarters of a tank oh, on the way yeah. down. To be fair, the lad who recovered us, he said, what do you think it is? And I was like, it's either the cam belt or, or fuel. He's like, oh, you'd be the first person the day if it is. Uh, it's fuel. Hello, Father, you all right? Yeah, it's all right, thank you. Yeah, not too bad now. Um, uh, you know your uh, Land Rover, Range Rover, with a fuel gauge, does it does it just read wrong or does it just not read the same? It just turn off sometimes. <laughs> it just turns off sometimes. Ah, oh. because I just ran out of fuel on the M6 with with half a tank. It said. No, I uh, said so you can't trust it. You gotta go by the uh... yeah by the trip computer. But that's me just being lazy. I saw it had 300 miles on the trip, but it had three quarters of a tank. I was like, that must be wrong. Then I reset it, did another 200. <laughs> <laughs> and came to a dramatic stop. Oh, great. But that's all right, we're all recovered now. Oh, right. I thought the cam belt had gone for a minute, but I lucked out. Oh, all right, okay. Oh, that's all right. Oh, well, I, I know now. I was. I shouldn't have, I should have just put fuel in. So, I was being lazy. So much energy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you done what you needed to do? Uh, we've got to do another two hours. Well, we, we've done 200 miles out of 600. But if we know we've got fuel in now, we'll be all right. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right. I just thought I'd, uh, just for the sake of we're trying to figure out what's happening, I uh, thought I'd ask. Yeah, okay, bud. All right. Speak to you later. Hello. Cheers, mate. Yeah, he wasn't bothered. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we broke down there. Yeah, oh, lucky son. What a yeah, shame. Lucky son. <laughs> Engine management lights on again, so we need to, uh, probably because I think it's got a misfire. I'm going to be terrified of this car now. And it wasn't the most, it's not like how it broke down, it's just breaking down. Do you know, I think it must be like a northern thing. When we were broken down on the motorway, they're like, yeah, literally ours, it's just off this juncture as well, but it was like a 15 minute drive. And then they're like, I was like, where's the nearest fuel station? It's literally just there. But we've actually gone, you know, quite far, well, a mile, but it's not like right there, is it? Let's see how much she takes. It's gotta be over a hundred. Forever. Just gotta pump it in really slow. Not going to be. Going a bit better now. It does sound like it's glugging though, like there's air in there, doesn't it? I'm sure someone will be in the comments telling us why that is. If you ran low. In any other circumstances, that would do. We put 50 quid in, but I need to know that it's full so that we can count the miles. Thank God it was a free recovery. Right, that I think surely. I'm still tripping some in. It's probably going to blow back in my face massively. We're at 86 litres. Maybe it's a 90 litre tank. At this point, just let it blow. Just let this day end. I think it's almost 150 quid. We're nearly at 100 litres now. I think oh, 100. Oh, oh. oh. got spotted. <laughs> Still taking it. Oh, I think they've turned us off. I reckon they think we're taking the piss, they've turned us off. <laughs> Alright, 155 quid it is, I think. I think we think we're getting ready to run off. Where's the fuel cap go? Oh, it's down there. Let's go shopping by paying for it. Got a record of that, and it's just under 100 litres. Right, just under 100 litres acquired. Ah. 
So we're now on 199.5 miles. So we've got until 600, which is the end of our journey, basically. We shouldn't have to fill up again. Let's hope not, because that was 154 quid. Oh, uh, look, now, look. We've just filled up 100 litres, and now it says we're bone dry. How we doing guys, you alright? Not too bad. How was the drive home, mate? Yeah, good, yeah. No events now? No. Uneventful, if I had to pick a word, yeah. Nice. <laughs> See you soon. Right, Skelmersdale down. Minor mishaps along the way. Now we've got to get across to... Well, we haven't had anything to eat yet, have we? Other than a half a brownie each. I'm now roasting. I need to find out where we're going. An hour and 55. I knew there's no way it would go to plan. I love the way the harmony, different elements that have been Three minutes to a very welcome bed after what's been about what? What time are we going to get there? About nine. We've been on the road since about ten. It's about 11 hours on the road. No wonder Toby's like, <laughs> just like slumping away here in the passenger seat over there. Nearly there. Good morning. It is now nine o'clock. We didn't get any footage of arriving here at the Ibis. I think Toby was about to die. He was that tired. And I was pretty damn tired too. I'm very tired this morning. We are now... 312 miles into our journey which should be just under 600 our next stop is only eight minutes away though which is to see dave james and wayne maybe even howard at the lovely car company so we'll head down and see dave and the boys and then get on the road to g3 it's worth pointing out we have still got engine management lights and the weather is now awful as well oh and i haven't set my sat nav either Fairly certain Dave's place is on like one long road, so I have no idea where we're gonna park or trailer. We'll figure it out. No idea where we're going because the sat nav won't load. So I'm just gonna wing it until it fires up. Starting route to the lovely car company. Head north on Chesterfield Road, then use the roundabout to make a U-turn. Of course I picked the wrong way. <laughs> I guess where that van's turning around. What does a solid white line mean on the side of the road? I guess it means you can't park there. straightest world on the road before we can turn around. This is, this is the, the lovely fabled car place, yeah. <laughs> We've come to see it just before you move on.
Hello. Hi. We better get in because uh, we're running a bit late now. It's telling us it's now 56 minutes, not 40. So that puts us exactly on time for the MOT and we've got to get it out of G3 yet. So let's go. I booked in for an MOT with you at half 11, yeah. but I am running behind. Um, I just wanted to A, phone let you know, and B, see just how busy you were, if there was a chance of it would be okay if I was 15, 20 minutes late, or if it just completely writes it off. No, we don't have to rebook you for that. Uh, I'm choking. Okay. Um, okay. I am doing my best to get there, but I will um, let you know if I can't. All right, thanks so much. No worries, cheers. Do you reckon if we book an MT at home, we can drive? Right, so we're currently still en route to G3. We've had to take a detour through these really bumpy lanes, which is not ideal with a trailer on, uh, because there's been an accident on the road. It's like, yesterday it was like bright sun, today it's pouring it's down. Sign. Turn left onto Great North Road. And there's floods everywhere. So we're taking the back route to G3, but all the delays means that we had an MOT booked for the Ranger in literally like three minutes, which we're gonna miss. I've already spoken to them to kind of explain that we're not gonna make it, that he can't squeeze us in, you know, any other time today or whatever, he'd have to rebook. So right to that leaves us in a pickle with the Ranger bit of a waste of coming up here if we can't get it back because it won't fit in this trailer and yeah not really many options there other than just leaving it there for McCauley to come up with the other trailer but we do have a Disco 4 here which they were gonna deliver for me but then they wanted more money because they said it's got a warning light and therefore they can't drive it I can't remember what the warning light is so we're gonna check that out because we might be able to get that out Toby might want to drive that back. Worst case scenario, I can put it on the trailer, but I imagine it's going to be complicated now trying to tell them I want to swap cars around for delivery and whatever. So, we will have to see when we get there. We're only 10 minutes away now, but this, what we're seeing right now, this kind of archway of trees and a country lane, doesn't really match the area where G3 is, so. Fingers crossed we're just taking the back route in. We'll see you when we get to G3 and we figure out what we're going to do. Left. G3 vehicle options. Let's have a look at our discovery, see what warnings it may have had. I can't tell what you reckon. Could be coolant, could be a DPF blocked or something. We could pick it up in 10 minutes. So do we make the choice? So let's see. So it's slightly, the thing is the rain, the discovery is slightly too wide to go on the trailer. So if we got it out, we'd have to leave it. I suppose we could get it out. And if it doesn't, if it's no good to drive back, I can't go on the trailer. We could leave it in their car park over and get McCauley back up here in the next couple of days and then go and get the Ranger. So should we book it in and just get it out and see what's happening? Yeah. Right, let's go and collect and have a wee wee. All right, keys and paperwork acquired. We have to get this disco out, see what the score of it is. At least we have got the top down with us if we do need to clear some code, maybe. Uh, yeah, that was quite simple booking that, even though I've already half paid for a delivery on it. But as Toby was just saying, like literally nothing has gone to plan on this trip. This 600 miles in the Range Rover. Yeah, each step of the way we were planning to like turn up at a certain time with the Transformation lads and we had to get them to recover us. Then we were planning to get to Dave's at a certain time and maybe film a video there, but we didn't have time for that. And then when we left, it was all traffic. 
couldn't get here in time to do our MOT, so we had to cancel the MOT. And now we're not even gonna pick up a Ranger, potentially. We still might do. We'll see what this is like first. We'll get this out, and then we can always pick up the other one after, if needs be. We're not gonna waste a trip up here and a hotel stay, because the, we were saying the, the ironic thing is, if this doesn't all pan out, it was only three and a half hours, really, up to Skelmersdale to see the transformation as We could have done that in one hit and one back, judging by the time that we actually got to the, back to the hotel last night at Chesterfield. It was about nine. Uh, we could have been back home by ten, so hey-ho. It was nice to see Dave, James and Wayne, everyone, this morning. Oh, there it is. It's got a warning for bonnet open. I think that's the only warning there. They're really telling us they can't drive it because it had a warning for bonnet open. Slow down or vehicle will lower. That's right, we want it to lower anyway. Although, we don't know if they jump started it. And that's why it says bonnet open, because then if we stop, we'll turn back around and check. Because the last thing I want to do is turn it off at a petrol station and not be able to start again. So the warning is for bonnet open. Okay, it might be, I mean, these are notorious for the sensors not working. Seems all right. Steering is quite heavy, but. God, it's proper grimy, isn't it? Look at the schmegums. Let's just have a look at the bonnet then. See if we can't slam it shut. Uh, release it on your side. So it was loose. Uh, maybe it's just not latching. I'm not sure why. That's about it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, grab the tray plates and the boots of Tother One. And then we can just go then, really, can't we? Get some fuel large. Yeah, you got heated seats and everything. Might. Live in the highway. Oh, it stinks. We'll get you an air freshener as well, I think. Yeah. Here we are buying air again. We should carry a pump, <laughs> shouldn't we? People will be very mad. Please pass your credit card. Please wait for confirmation. Got a lot of that this last couple of days. Right, so we are on the road from G3. Uh, as you probably already explained. We have grabbed the Disco 4 instead, which Toby's driving. And I'm just thinking I'm just going to pay to have the range delivered. It's going to cost me 420 quid, which is a, a bit of pill to swallow, but it's a long old drive up here and a lot of mucking around. So, probably the simplest solution. I've now covered. 359, well exactly, pretty much, we're about to roll over to exactly 360 miles in the L322. We've got 226 to get back, so just under 600 miles. <clears throat> Technically we shouldn't have to fill up again, according to my dad's calculations on the tank on this thing, because my fuel gauge is still flipping from zero to full, obviously can't really be trusted. We'll see how I'm feeling when we get close. The last thing I want to do is run out of fuel again, so maybe I will get a drop of juice somewhere along the way because why you run the risk will be... Well, we will be cutting it that close if we started off with 300 miles on the clock. And I just kind of assumed that was nothing and uh, a mistake. And then we did another 200, so we had 500 miles in there really. So we will see. We've got a good four and a quarter hours ahead of us at saying we'll get back quarter past five, which would be nice. I can get my feet up and get some sleep. That's assuming this and now another Land Rover both make it back issue free, which, you know, is certainly not a guarantee. So Toby will probably get a bit of a time lapse of us cruising along. And I'll catch up with you whenever it next makes sense. See you in a bit. We 
we are now 455 miles into this 600 mile journey. We've got well, 133 miles to go. We've got about two hours 15 left to go and really cliche. I'm really starting to kind of gel this L322 now. To be fair, the whole way it's been incredibly comfortable. I'm sat here now warming up my heated seat on. My elbow's getting a bit sore on the uh, on the door card, but there's not much you can do about that. I can't really mark a car down for that too much. It's smooth, it's really stable with a trailer on the back. This 3.6 TD V8, albeit very juicy, and obviously it doesn't like to go up hills in cruise control. When you're kind of nursing around that, the engine itself is like so damn impressive. It doesn't feel like you've got a car on the back and I feel like I could out sprint most cars on the road even with a car on a trailer on the back. The air conditioning is like crisp cold. For something that is 17 years old, it is damn impressive. This must have been some machine when it first came out. I'm trying to think of what else in 2007 would have been quite as impressive as this. Which leaves me in a bit of a quandary really as to what we do with this. Obviously it's my dad's car, it's not mine. He's kind of gifted it to me for use, you know, if I want to tow with it, I can, as I have done in this scenario, but I have had to tax it at a cost of about 65 quid for the month, I think. And I would like a working fuel gauge so I could rely on it a little bit more. I would like it to be able to go up a hill with cruise control without it getting upset and restricting power and I would like the remote central locking to work. I'm sure these are all things that could be fixed but whether it's economically viable or not I don't know but I was ruling it out because it's 142,000 miles, nearly 143,000 now and thinking that made it just not really worth it but the more I think about it I know the bodywork is in really good condition. Jordan previously uh, machine polished this for my dad and it just looks incredible. It's in nice condition, it hasn't got tinted windows, it's got the original wheels. So let me know what you think, what should we do with this? Should I offer to buy it from my dad, fix it up, keep it as our tow car, albeit you know expensive on fuel? Should we fix it up and raffle it? Should I just leave it to one side, let my dad do what he wants with it and ignore another project for now? I don't really know. But that is what I'm going to be considering for the next couple of hours while I cruise through endless 50 mile an hour speed restriction zones. And we conclude this 600 mile journey for the old girl. Right, so there we have it. We have made it back. The Range Rover has made it back. I feel like it deserves a little bit of love now for having made it back. I think it was actually 591 miles. And to be honest, yesterday afternoon, I didn't think we'd actually, this would ever be back here. I thought we we're gonna have to get the transfer motion guys to scrap it. So yeah, good result. I'm very tired. We've done a lot of driving. Even our new Disco 4 is back. That behaved itself. So despite the obvious like hiccups along the way and miles and miles of 50 mile an hour speed restrictions. It was actually not a bad drive, I don't think, but I'm not in a rush to do it again. So that is it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. If you haven't already, then you could be in a chance of winning a 2000 pound tag away watch that I'm giving away completely free as soon as we hit 75,000 subscribers. Thanks again to Top Dom for helping us out with this video with the jump packs 
and the diagnostics. I'll put links to those in the description. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.